Hi, welcome to Scope Maths video. In this video, I'm going to look at the video solutions for the equations that involve x squared, so the simple quadratic equations. If you need a recap on this topic, watch video number 116a on corporatemaths.com, or you can go to www.corporatemaths.com forward slash contents and scroll down to 116a, which is the video tutorial on those simple quadratics, those x squared equations. Okay, so let's have a look at our first question. So our first question says solve x squared equals 9. So we're looking for a number, when squared, that gives us 9. Well, 3 squared is 9, but also negative 3 squared is 9, because a negative times a negative is a positive. So negative 3 times negative 3 is also 9. So that means that x will equal plus or minus 3. So that means that x equals 3, or x equals negative 3. And that's it. So question 2. Question 2 says solve x squared equals 100. So the square root of 100 is 10, so that means that x equals 10. But also remember that negative 10 times negative 10 is also 100. So that means that x equals plus or minus 10. So that means that x equals 10 or x equals negative 10. Okay, let's have a look at our next question. So next question, question 3. Question 3 says solve x squared equals 81. So the square root of 81 is 9, so that means that x equals 9. But it can also equal negative 9 because negative 9 times negative 9 is also 81. So x equals plus or minus 9, so x equals 9 or x equals negative 9. Okay, let's have a look at question 4. So question 4 says solve x squared equals 1. Now the square root of 1 is 1, so that means that x equals 1 or negative 1, because negative 1 times negative 1 is also 1. So x equals plus or minus 1. So that means x equals 1 or x equals negative 1. Because remember, 1 squared is 1, but negative 1 squared is also 1. Question 5 says solve x squared equals 400. So the square root of 400 is 20, so that means x equals 20. But remember, it can also equal negative 20, because negative 20 times negative 20 is also 400. So that means x equals 20, or x equals negative 20. Okay, let's have a look at question 6. So question 6 says, Matt says the only answer to x squared equals 4 is x equals 2. Explain why Matt is wrong. So remember, whenever we square a positive number, we get a positive, but also when we square a negative number, we get a positive. So that means that x could be equal to 2, or x could be equal to negative 2, because negative 2 times negative 2 is also 4. So x equals negative 2 is also a solution, because negative 2 times negative 2 is equal to 4. Okay, let's have a look at question 7. So question 7 says, solve x squared equals 225. So this is a calculator question, so that means that we can work out the square root of 225 on our calculator, and that is equal to 15. So that means that x will equal 15, but also remember, negative 15 times negative 15 is also 225, so x equals plus or minus 15. So that means that x equals 15, or x equals negative 15. Okay, let's have a look at question 8. Question 8 says, solve x squared equals 1,444. So if we use our calculator to square root that, we square root 1,444, we get that's equal to 38. So the square root of 1,444 is equal to 38. So that means that x equals, remember it could be 38, 38 multiplied by 38 would be 1,444, but also could be negative 38, because remember, a negative times a negative is a positive. So x equals plus or minus 38, so x equals 38, or x equals negative 38. Okay, let's have a look at question 9. Question 9 says solve x squared equals 2.89. So let's work out the square root of 2.89 on our calculator. So the square root of 2.89 is equal to 1.7. So that means x equals 1.7, but also remember it could be negative 1.7, because a negative times a negative is a positive. So x equals plus or minus 1.7. So that means x equals 1.7, or x equals negative 1.7. Okay, let's have a look at question 10. So question 10 says solve x squared plus 7 is equal to 32. So remember, whenever we're solving an equation, we want to get the x's on one side and the numbers on the other. So we want to get rid of this plus 7 to begin with. So let's subtract 7 from both sides of the equation. So that will give us x squared. Now we took away 7 to get rid of the plus 7, so it would just be x squared on the left-hand side on its own. And on the right-hand side, we've got 32 take away 7, which is equal to 25. 
Now we know our number squared equals 25, so that means that x, our number, could be equal to 5. It could also be equal to negative 5, so that means x equals plus or minus 5. So that would be x equals 5, or x equals negative 5. And we can check our answer. Let's take our 5. 5 squared is equal to 25, plus 7 is 32. But if x was equal to negative 5, negative 5 times negative 5 is equal to 25, plus 7 is also equal to 32. So that's it. Let's have a look at question 11. So question 11 says solve x squared minus 2 is equal to 119. Now again we want to get the x on its own so let's add 2 to both sides of the equation to begin with. So it will give us x squared. We added 2 to get rid of the takeaway 2 so it will just leave us with the x squared on its own on the left hand side. And on the right hand side 119 plus 2 is 121. Now we're looking for a number squared to give us 121. So that's going to be 11. So remember, it could be equal to 11, because 11 times 11 is 121. Or it could be equal to negative 11, because a negative 11 times negative 11 is also 121. So x equals plus or minus 11. So x equals 11, or x equals negative 11. Okay, let's have a look at question 12. Now question 12 is a calculator question, and we've been asked to solve x squared minus 45 equals 279. So let's add 45 to both sides of the equation to begin with. So that will give us x squared on the left hand side. And on the right hand side, when we do 279 plus 45, that equals 324. Now we want to find out what x is, so we're going to work out the square root of 324. And the square root of 324 is equal to 18. So that means that x will equal plus or minus 18. And that means that x equals 18, or x equals negative 18. And again, we can check our answers. We can do 18 squared and subtract 45, and we will get 279. Or we could take our negative 18, and we can square that. And then remember, that would give us a positive answer. And then if we took away 45, we would, and we'd also get 279. OK, let's have a look at question 13. OK, let's have a look at question 13. So question 13 says, the equation x squared equals k has exactly one solution write down the value of k. Now so far in this worksheet you've seen that all the questions we've done have had two solutions. There's been a positive solution and a negative solution. Now usually whenever you're solving these questions you can get that there's two solutions like we've seen. There is a case whenever there's just one solution or sometimes we've got no solutions at all. And uh, let's just talk about these a wee second. So first of all if you had x squared equals 9 we were looking for a number that whenever we square it, we get 9. So that would be 3 or negative 3. So x equals plus or minus 3. And that's why we get two solutions. So whenever x squared equals a positive number, you will find that there's two solutions. When x squared is equal to 0, you'll find there's just one solution. Because x will equal 0. Because 0 times 0 is 0. Um, having positive or negative, well, that doesn't really apply to 0. So the answer would just be x equals 0. So there's one solution there. And sometimes you'll find there's no solutions at all. For instance, if you had x squared equals negative 16, we're looking for a number squared to give us negative 16. Now, there's no real solutions. Maybe if you study maths further on, you'll see there's imaginary numbers, but let's not go into that now. You've got a number squared will give us negative 16. Well, a positive times a positive is a positive, and a negative times a negative is a positive. So this would have no solutions, um, no real solutions. So we're looking for the value for k where there's only one solution. Well, that would be 0, because if you had x squared equals 0, there's only one possible number that you could square to get 0, and that would be 0. OK, let's have a look at question 14. So question 14 says solve 2x squared equals 50. So we want the x on its own, so let's divide by 2 and divide by 2. So that will give us x squared equals 25, because we're dividing by 2 to get rid of the times by 2, and 50 divided by 2 is 25. Now we're looking for a number that when we square it, we get 25. So that could be 5 or negative 5. So x equals plus or minus 5. So answers would be x equals 5 or x equals negative 5. OK, let's have a look at question 15. So question 15 says solve 4x squared equals 36. So we want to get the x on its own. So we want to get rid of this multiply by 4. So we will divide both sides by 4. And 4x squared divided by 4, where well, that would be just 1x squared, or x squared. And then on the right-hand side, we've got 36, and we're going to divide that by 4, and that gives us 9. Now, we're looking for a number squared to get 9, but well, that's going to be 3. x equals 3. Or it could be negative 3, so it's going to be plus or minus 3. So x equals 3, or x equals negative 3. OK, let's have a look at question 16. Question 16 says solve 5x squared equals 180. 
So we're going to divide both sides of the equation by 5 to get rid of the multiply by 5. So 5x squared divided by 5, well, that's just x squared. And then the right-hand side, we've got 180 divided by 5, that would be equal to 36. Now we're looking for a number squared to give us 36, so that's going to be 6 or negative 6. So x equals plus or minus 6. So x equals 6 or x equals negative 6. And again, you could check this answer. You could take 6 and square it to get 36 and multiply by 5 to get 180. Or we could take our over answer of negative 6 and negative 6 squared, well, that's also 36. Multiplied by 5 would be 180. Okay, let's have a look at question 17. So question 17 says solve 3x squared equals 192. So we want to get the x on its own, so we want to divide both sides of the equation by 3. So divide by 3 and divide by 3. So that would give us x squared, because 3x squared divided by 3 would just be 1x squared or x squared. And on the right hand side, whenever we divide 192 by 3, we get 64. Now we're looking for a number squared to give us 64, that's going to be 8 or negative 8. So x equals plus or minus 8, so that means x equals 8 or x equals negative 8. Okay, let's have a look at question 18. Okay, so the question says, the area of a square is 169 centimetres squared. Walter says that the length of each side is equal to 13 centimetres or negative 13 centimetres. Explain why Walter is incorrect. Well, if Walter was solving the equation x squared equals 169, well, he would be right that x would be equal to 13, but it could also be equal to negative 13. It would be equal to plus or minus 13. But we're dealing with a square here, and we're looking at the lengths of the sides of the square. So we would just square root 169 to get 13, but it couldn't be negative 13 because it's the length of the side of the square, where it couldn't be a negative number. So the length, the side length of the square cannot be negative. And that's it. Okay, let's have a look at question 19. So question 19 says solve x plus 9 squared equals 256. And this is a calculator question. Now we want to get rid of the squared first of all here, because we've got brackets, it means that if we were working this out, we would be taking a number, adding 9, and then squaring it. So let's get rid of the squared to begin with. So we're looking at things, considering a number that whenever we square it, we get 256. So let's square root 256. And when we do that, we get 16. So we're looking for a number squared that would give us 256. Well, that would be 16 or negative 16. So that means that x plus 9 equals plus or minus 16, because it could be a positive number. You could have x plus 9 is 16 and square it to be 256. Or it could be you've got x plus 9 equals negative 16, and when you square that, you also get 256. Okay, so I'm going to write this equation out twice. I'm going to write x plus 9 equals 16, and I'm also going to write x plus 9 equals negative 16. And when we solve both of these equations, we'll get our two answers. So first of all, our left-hand side here, we've got x plus 9 equals 16. So let's take away 9 and take away 9, and we get x equals 7. And the second equation, we've got x plus 9 equals negative 16. So let's take away 9 and take away 9, and we'll get x equals. Now, if we have negative 16 and we take away 9, that's negative 25, because we're going down another 9. So that means that our answers would be x equals 7 or x equals 7 or x equals negative 25. And let's just check those answers. If we had 7, 7 plus 9 is equal to 16, squared is 256. Or if we had x equals negative 25, if we added 9, we would get negative 16. And when we square negative 16, well, that's a negative times a negative, which is a positive, so we would also get 256. So in this question, we, we worked out the square root of 256, which was equal to 16. That meant that the x plus 9 could be equal to 16 or negative 16. And then we wrote down those two equations, and we solved both of them to get our answers. Let's have a look at another one now. So let's have a look at question 20. So question 20 says solve x minus 1 squared is equal to 100. So in other words, x minus 1 and then square it is equal to 100. So let's work out what number squared would give us 100. Well, the square root of 100 is equal to 10. So that means that whatever is squared here would, could be equal to 10 or could be equal to negative 10. So that means that x minus 1 could be equal to plus or minus 10 because 10 squared is 100 or minus 10 squared is 100. So let's write this equation out twice. Let's write x minus 1 equals 10 or 
x minus 1 is equal to negative 10. So this could be equal to 10 or negative 10. So if we solve this equation, we would add 1 to both sides to get x equals 11. Or this equation, we would add 1 to both sides. And we would get, well, we add 1 to get rid of the minus 1. So it's just going to be x. So we have minus 10, add 1. Well, that means we've got 1, so that would be minus 9. So that means x equals 11 or x equals minus 9. And let's check our answers. If we had 11, 11 take away 1 is 10, and squared is equal to 100. And if we had x equals negative 9, well, negative 9 take away 1, well, that's negative 10. And negative 10 squared, well, negative times a negative is a positive, so negative 10 squared would be equal to 100. And that's it. And that's it. I hope you found these video solutions useful. If you found it useful, please like this video. Please subscribe to the channel. Okay, thanks very much.